Hi there. Uh, welcome back. Um, another short video. Well, not another short video. A short video. I haven't had a short video in many years. Uh, what I've been doing is working on a sub project related to the main video I'm making. So uh, that's what's taken me so long. I think I'm overthinking stuff as I, well, I don't know if I'm overthinking it or not. But I'm trying to get a good way to display everything in basic on the screen without a without it being so slow, and b trying to you know trying to get the um, player uh, character which I used to ampersand in the last video uh, to display properly. So what I did was um, made a time lapse video of me working on the project, and it's about what. 7, 8, 9, 10, about 5 hours, I'll give or take, uh, condensed down to about 30 seconds. But before I run that, I'm going to show you where I'm at now. And this, and this, this is after I've did the video, so I'm going to go ahead and run the game. You'll see it run and throw some numbers up there. And there we go. Now this is very temporary and very, 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 uh, yeah, temporary is probably the best bet to give it. But you see, there's the ampersand. You notice the lack of color, but the ampersand, a trap, the exit, and another trap. I changed it because I was having some problems. I know what the pro or I, I solved the problems, but I just kept this character instead of uh, uh, the other character I had. So anyway, it says command down here, and nothing much. And you're going to notice when I hit end for north, our little guy moves up there. I hit south. And you also see it flash, you know, down around where my mouse is. Now this is very rudimentary, as there's nothing. When I hit the exit, it doesn't say anything. You know, it's not doing anything other than moving around. But if I go to the edge of the screen and I hit west, it stays. And north. Now, yeah, see, it, it has the, the border, the collision detection for the borders. Now, the other thing you're going to notice is when I do hit the keys, you know, it takes a second for it to go from one point to another, but these all stay, you know, it's not redrawing or it's not refreshing, which, you know, as we saw before, basic is slow. Uh, that's because, I'm going to quit. I've done something different. If you've been around the Commodore 64 before, these numbers down here might seem a little bit on the familiar side. And they're the screen coordinates. And what I've done is I've read these screen coordinates into an array right here as CX, which I dimensioned right here. And then since I want to use a two-dimensional array, RM, and in this case I'm just using uh, 25 uh, indexes I guess would be the best thing to call it. So I have RM5 or uh, RM which is my room and RG which is the graphics or the screen graphics. So whatever variable is here tells what kind of tile I have and this tells me the address I need to poke to. So basically what I need to do is get this SC25 which has all my screen coordinates and put them in you know this right here. So what I did was uh, make a for next loop or a nested for next loop and I gotta fix this because that shouldn't be right there but anyway it doesn't matter right now just keeps re <laughs> uh, redefining that function right there uh, but what I do is take RG and that's our, our graphics here and it equals SC C1 and C1 is starts off at 0 and every time it increments through the array, it adds one until it gets to uh, it goes from zero to twenty-four or twenty-five um, indexes. Uh, so that was an easy way to get the value of this into this. Now I probably could have done something down at the bottom here, but I was I was in a hurry and I didn't really want to try to figure it out. So now, when I uh, print the screen, or actually when I draw the screen. 
and let's go ahead and see where. Okay, here's where we set up our rooms. Um, C1 is our throwaway variable, and it's given a, a random number between uh, 1 and 100. And uh, if C1 is less than 81, then we're a normal dungeon floor. If it's greater, it's uh, one of the traps, all right? And then down here, we set what the exit is. And then down here, we are setting the player position. And if the player position equals the exit, we kind of, it's kind of recursive. It goes back to 1590, where we get our random values for the player's coordinates. Uh, if it equals one of the traps, it does it again. So we can test if, if we're going to start the game with our player on the exit or start the game with our player on a trap and fix that. Um, print screen. Again, our nested uh, uh, nested loops, and it says if R M, if our room equals zero, which is regular dungeon, then we poke. Now you notice I'm using poking, or you know a poke, which is kind of like a pointer. I'm I, I'm I'm going to the address, and I'm putting this value in that address, which is a, is a pesky code, and I think it's for the period, and then another one for that little half. Uh, checkerboard and another one for I'm not sure what I use what 45 or the other ones are but uh, these are the graphics that I'm poking into memory and anybody who remembers doing this stuff in the 80s remembers using poke an awful lot um, obviously this would be better for the game if I was doing an assembly language because it would be faster but uh, I'm not that good in assembly language and I might try it in the future but I'm not going to try it now. Uh, down here is where we print the player. So we can print all this and we'll go, then we can go down here and print the player. Now the interesting thing is if I hit run it again you'll see the player pop up right afterwards. So we'll, I'll run it again and when the map appears you won't see the player at all and the ampersand, the ampersand is the player, but he'll pop up after the map is there. See? So if I hit north, the map stays there, and there goes the player. Now this is really nice, except it gives me one small problem, and that is displaying information, because I wanted to kind of say, you know, if you're on a period, it says you're in a dark, dank dungeon. If you hit a trap, I want to say you hit a trap. Um, but I'm going to have to do some special formatting to do that because in order for even to get this command and whatever to appear, I have to do some really weird, like here, uh, when I when I print the movement command, which you see right here, I print this stuff first where I print home, it goes up in the corner. Then it go print down times six where it goes down six and then it always it's you know it's always right here. So it'll print command all the time here. So for any other information, wherever it is, I'm going to have to do the same thing. So I'm gonna have to figure that out too. Now the other thing is on the main game I'm making, the dungeon is ten by ten square, so that's a hundred areas. This is five by five, so it's twenty-five. And you'll notice I had to do 25 data or 25 pieces of data in five data statements. Um, so when I do it on the main game and I want color, I'm going to have to do 100. Or I'm going to have to do probably 10 data statements with you know 10 10 across, so I can get my 100. And then I'm also going to have to do it for the um, screen color location because those two memory locations are different. Um, which just means it's a lot of work and when I do it I might do that not recording it because nobody wants to watch that nobody does uh, so I'm pretty happy with that and uh, you know everything else is working pretty good I'm I've spent a lot of time <laughs> for this so-called simple program, a simple game. And uh, I'm hoping people will appreciate it and you know maybe it'll at least get somebody interested in wanting to learn how to program on these old 8-bit computers. 
Uh, one final thing before I go, and this was what kind of inspired me, is I saw a guy who made a Space Invaders game on a TRS-80, and he programmed that in BASIC. Now it's slow, like mine is slow, but it is pretty impressive. So, I don't know if I'll do a, a Space Invader game anytime soon, but because uh, I want to start messing with assembly language uh, and other languages like Python and Pascal and C++ and you know the works uh, Java of course I'm not sure about Java anymore because um, all the problems that Oracle's having with the Java security and the Java runtime engines we'll have to see and uh, C sharps the last name language but yeah I want to start messing with those too but anyway without further ado here is the uh, time-lapse video of me working on this project. I will see you later. Bye-bye.